Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. In this week's guitar lesson, we're going to learn a country composition with a little bit of blues thrown in. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play. I'll show you how to do it note for note, and we'll break it down over the course of two videos. In this video, we're going to look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half, get access to the interactive tab viewer and download the tab PDF file. You can get those things by going to ActiveMelody.com. Go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP340. All right, so we have a country composition this week. I realize it's been a while since I've done one of these. Uh, and I've got, I threw in a little bit of blues and some blues licks in there as well. But uh, this is a standalone composition. I'm playing this acoustically. You can do this on an acoustic or electric guitar, whatever you've got, standard tuning. But I'm going to show you how to write your own compositions like this and how to use this technique when you improvise. That's really what I want all of you to know in all of these lessons is not just to memorize what I'm doing, but understand it. That's the, that's the value of the lesson is really understanding how it works. And you're going to find that this is pretty simple stuff. Even though it might sound complicated, it's really not. It's just a 1-4-5 uh, chord format, an A chord, a D chord, and an E chord. If you know how to play those chords, you're halfway there. Uh, and then you throw a melody into those chords. And the way that I come up with a melody is I have, I have a little formula for that, and we'll go through that as we get into this. Uh, but let's talk about the, the chord format first. So the chords for this, it starts with a one chord, which is your A chord. And it goes to the D. Back to the A, so one, four, one. Then to the E chord, which is your five chord. And then back to the one and so forth. That's all we're going to be playing over, very basic chord format. Now what can I do to that to make that sound more interesting? Well. My formula for this is if I'm thinking country and I wanted to have more of a country feel, I go to the major pentatonic scale. I realize I'm generalizing here, but this is just, you just bear with me. This is a rough sketch, and so you, you're going to add in some color to this down the road. But to start with, I start with the major pentatonic scale for uh, country, and if I'm going more of a bluesy direction, I go to the minor pentatonic scale. And when you get uh, the bet more comfortable with this, you can blend the two. You can start to go back and forth, and you're going to see that as we get into this lesson. But that's that's basically it. So what I did was I looked at, I know, I know this is in the key of A, so I looked at A major pentatonic scale, pattern one, which is right there off of this A chord. And so I started messing around with the notes in the A major pentatonic scale. There's only five notes in your pentatonic scales. And I came up with that as a starting point. And a lot of country songs will, will have like this little hook that starts the song, a little, uh, little fill lick uh, that, that kicks it off. And so that's what we're doing here. So I'm starting with the open fifth string, fourth fret fifth string, fifth fret fifth string, and then I go ahead and bar on the second fret. I bar the first four strings and I play the fourth string. So I go. And the reason that I bar that second fret is I'm ready to strum the chord after I play the lick. So I go, right? Um, so now after that I went, so that's the uh, second fret fourth string, fourth fret fourth string, second fret third string. So if I were to play just the, the lead part with the, or the, the melody without the chords, sounds like that. Now in between that, I'm just working in the A chord where I can. Right? So that, that should make sense. And even something as simple as that, there's actually a lot uh, to, to digest there. Because what's going on is I'm taking a, a basic chord, but I'm starting to work in a melody. You could take this same formula, just that, and don't go any further in the lesson if, if you want to dissect that and take a song like Happy Birthday or Jingle Bells or whatever simple melody that you know, Mary Had a Little Lamb, and use that same formula for doing that, uh, for, for coming up with, with a, a, a melody. Now it's going to take a little bit of work. You're going to have to first figure out the key of the song and, and then you know what open strings do you have and you know what works, but after kind of playing around with it, you're going to start to find that you can do it. And it's not that difficult. So just remember, it's slow in the beginning. Even when I was writing this, it didn't just fall out. I had to noodle around for quite a bit to, to, to come up with something uh, that was solidified. Uh, but anyway, then it goes to the D chord. Back to the A chord. Now notice I, I could have just played the D chord down here. 
and then the A chord, but I wanted... that melody to come out. So what I'm doing there is I'm playing strings two and three on the second fret behind that bar there, that was the, our A chord, and then I've got my middle finger on the third fret second string, ring fingers on the fourth fret third string. Then I slide that up two frets. So that's a harmonized third, and I want you to know that harmonized third off of this chord shape. And I've talked about this in other lessons, but this is a when I realized this, this like blew my mind because I can immediately harmonize and I can always get to it in any key. So if I look at this A chord shape and I look at this shape and then this shape off of this chord shape, so connect those two back to this chord shape, now you can use this going forward in any key. So if I was playing C sharp, I could play C. There's that A chord shape just like we're doing down here. And so that's why caged is so important, or another reason why it is, because you can just take the same chords, repurpose them, and take the licks that you already know and use them any, any time. And this little harmonized third works in blues, country, you can bend it. Well, maybe not on acoustic guitar, but on electric you could. And you can get all kinds of uh, mileage out of that. So backing up, we have... And then we go to the D chord. Now notice I'm playing the D chord up here. I'm using the A chord shape. It's the same shape I was playing there. I'm just playing it up here. Now I use my pinky. Some people will use their ring finger for that. But I played the D chord here, and then that other version of it. So I always talk about this as being the fence. You've got this side of the fence, and then you've got this side of the fence. Well, this bar here is the same bar. I just replace it with my index finger. And then I come up here uh, and do a hammer-on. In this case, I'm going between the 7th fret and the 9th fret on the 5th string. So I'm playing strings 5, 4, and 3. So it just gives me another uh, way of playing the D chord. you got a D chord here and a D chord here. The only difference is the bass note changes. But when I do that, it, it cr adds to that melody that I'm trying to create. And then I go back to the A chord. Now, I kind of came down here, but I just, while I'm up here in this neighborhood, I try and find the nearest neighbor, and so I know there's an A chord right here. And I can use that open fifth string, since that's an, uh, an open A note. So I'm just playing, think of your A bar chord, where you bar in the fifth fret. I don't make the full bar, I'm just playing the top four strings out of it. And so that's the first part of this song. Let me play through it slowly. We have... Okay, now this is where, if I were just strumming the chords, I would stay on the A chord. Then go to the E chord. Now, instead of me just playing the A chord there, what can I do in place of that A chord? Well, this is where it gets very interesting. Because you've already set up, um, you've established the key of the song, you've established a little bit of a, a format by playing uh, what you have. So now you can take the liberty of stepping away from playing chords and play whatever you want. This is a formula that I've kind of just stumbled upon, I guess, as I've done this through the years. But I've noticed that if you, if you go ahead and set up the song first by playing a little bit of a chord, you know, hitting these chords here, now I can step away from the chords and I can play whatever kind of lead stuff I want. If I want it to sound bluesy, I can go into the minor pentatonic scale if I want it to sound happy or more country. I can go down here and play the major pentatonic scale stuff. So you could play whatever you want at this point in the song. That's the that's the the big takeaway for this part is the the melody or the lead part that I'm going to show you really has nothing to do with a melody or any of it. It's just playing a lead that's in the key of the song. So we're going to play all of that over an A. It's just an A major pentatonic scale. Actually, it would be A mixolydian mode to, to get into that. And I'll explain that in a minute. But, but that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to jump right out of that and go into that mixolydian mode. But you could play whatever you want. Experiment with it. Try playing just minor pentatonic blues stuff. It'll pull it into a different direction. And you're going to have to know when to get on the train and when to get off the train, meaning like how long you've got to do that. Um, but, uh, but that's where we're at in the song. So I ended up coming down here and playing. And 
And that's going from that A into, I do a chord change there and go in into the E, uh, which I'll explain. But um, so it starts with the open one string, third fret, second fret, open one string again. I'll explain where these notes are coming from in a minute. Then we're going to go down to the fifth fret, uh, third string, and do a quick slide. As soon as I play it, I slide down to the fourth fret, third string, and then the second fret, third string. So backing up from the beginning of that. And then we go down to the fourth fret, fourth string, uh, second fret, fourth string, second fret, third string, fourth fret, fourth string, second fret, fourth string. So it's like a little loop there. Just know that when you play that second fret fourth string the first time, you're, you, it's easiest just to go ahead and bar there. So you, then you can jump to the string above it, which would be on the third string. So where are these notes coming from? These are coming from, I started with major pentatonic scale, pattern one, right? So you can see those notes are in that pattern one of the major pentatonic scale, but this note is not. And there's two ways you can look at that. Uh, one is you can think of this as being mixolydian mode. And mixolydian mode is the major scale, but you flat the seventh interval. So if you're playing the A major scale, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, now you flat the seventh. So now you have, now that's a very, very popular scale for a lot of jam bands. I think of Grateful Dead, Allman Brothers, those kind of bands will play in that mixolydian mode uh, quite a bit. So this note is that flatted seventh. That's one way to look at it. The other way you can think of it is just mixing the major and minor pentatonic scale. So this note is in the minor pentatonic scale. That would be pattern five of A. Whereas this note is in the major pentatonic scale for A pattern one. And so when I went, you went kind of major, or sorry, minor, major, and then out of it. It just depends on how you want to look at it, but I just wanted to explain that. And then I came down to this uh, fifth fret uh, third string and slid back into the major pentatonic scale. Now this note um, carries a lot of weight and it works in both the, the major pentatonic scale pattern one and minor. Let me explain this. So if I'm playing an A, uh, this will be a big takeaway for a lot of you, a little lick that you can remember. So if you look at pattern one, it looks like that. It sounds very sterile, but if I add this one note, it, that note would be in the minor pentatonic scale, right? So, but by adding that note into your major pentatonic scale, you get this real nice little uh, pull towards the blues. So just remember that, it's, and it's easy to do because it's following the same pattern. You have 5th fret, 2nd fret, 5th fret, 2nd fret, 5th fret, then you go into your the rest of your pentatonic scale. It also works when you're playing the minor pentatonic scale. So if we're playing A minor, that would be your blue note. So that's actually the, the blues scale, just adding that one note to your minor pentatonic scale. But um, just remember that. So that same shape works in major and minor, and it gives a little more color to your lead. Okay, so backing up, we've learned this so far. Now after that I went. So so notice that my bar, my finger is kind of barring there on the second fret, or it's hanging out in that area because I'm just thinking about the A chord. And so all of these notes that you're playing, look at how they are in relation, or look at where they are in relation to that A chord. And notice that open string there. This might throw some of you because you think, well, I can only play that lick when I'm playing in the key of A. Well, not really, because you could go. So you could play that note down here, and then you could that then it's a closed lick that you could play anywhere. So after that, I'm gonna come down to the third fret fifth string and do a hammer on to the fourth fret fifth string. Second fret fourth string, fourth fret fourth string. This is where the song switches to the E chord. And so what I did there was I went. So after I played that 4th fret 4th string, 
I go ahead and slide up. And when I play that, I pick this note and then I slid up to this note, which would be the sixth fret, fourth string. So we're gonna go from the fourth fret, fifth fret to the sixth fret. And then after that, my index finger goes down on the fourth fret, third string. And then I go back to the sixth fret, fourth string. Now what is this? Well, this is another little um, another chord voicing for E. So remember, we're playing over the E chord now. And so what I did when I was improvising that or coming up with that part, I guess, it was I pictured um, my my options for E. So I know I've got this little harmonized third here. When I play an E chord, I've always got. I'm always thinking about like little shapes that I can use uh, in my playing. So I know I've got that, and that's also part of the E chord if you play it like this, which would be your C chord shape out of caged. So uh, I don't want to get too far down the road in that, but just know of that as an extension when you're playing an E chord. Right? So that's where I, I went into that. And then the last part of that I went kind of a Johnny Cash style um, real country twangy thing on the low E string. So sixth string and then I go to the second fret and pull it up so I'm pulling it sharp bending it twice and then back to the open uh, sixth string and then I can strum the chord so let's back up and play that whole lead part then going from the A uh, into the to the E chord All right, so that's a lot of information. Let me back up from the beginning and I'll play us up to that point. We have one, two, three. Okay, now the song goes back to the A chord here. And what I did here was kind of like your your blues shuffle thing. This would be kind of like that kind of thing that you you probably are familiar with if you're playing a blues rhythm. But that's just barring uh, the first four strings again on the second fret, playing strings five and four. So we're playing that open fifth string. Ring finger goes up here to the fourth fret, fourth string. Now I use my ring finger for this, I don't know why, I should probably use my pinky, but either way you're going to try and hit that 5th fret 4th string while playing the open 5th string, that's the, that's the key to that. And then I come down and go, so my ring finger comes back to the 4th fret 4th string. Notice this bar stays down the whole time, I should have mentioned that. 2nd fret uh, bar stays down, 1st 4 strings. So after that, I come down to the 4th fret 4th string, uh, play uh, the 2nd fret there behind the bar, and then 3rd uh, fret 5th string to the 4th fret 5th string. So we have... And then I go to the D chord, but I don't play the D chord, I ended up playing... So for that, it's just like a boogie woogie in D. I'm, uh, I've got my finger here on the 2nd fret 3rd string, uh, but I'm playing the 4th string, I'm starting with the 4th string, a down, this is just alternate picking with the right hand, down, up, down, up, down, up, a little bit of a shuffle to it. So it's 4th string, I'm going to do that same thing that I was doing over the A chord, but now we're doing it over the D chord, where I've got the 3rd fret 4th string up to the 4th fret 4th string. And then I come up to where my finger is on the 2nd fret 3rd uh, string. And then back to the 4th fret 4th string, 2nd fret 4th string. And that's all I played over that D chord. Instead of playing the chord itself, and then I came back down to the A chord. So uh, there's your E chord. Now after that, the song goes from an A chord to an E chord and back to the A. And what I
what I played instead of the chords, I went. All right, sounds complicated, but we're gonna break it down. You're gonna see it's not that hard at all. So between the second fret and the fourth fret on the third string, uh, second, fourth, second, and then we're gonna do a slide with a ring finger from the fourth fret to the sixth fret on the third string. Middle finger goes down on the fifth fret, second string. And then I'm gonna go slide back down to the fourth fret and then back down to the second fret on that third string. Now all of this is played over the A chord. And what am I playing here? Well, I'm playing A major pentatonic scale. I'm just thinking, there's your pattern one, here's your pattern two, right? And so I'm just sliding up into pattern two of your major pentatonic scale and back down to pattern one. The other way you can think about that is these two notes are in your A chord here. If I was playing the A major bar chord on the fifth fret, that would be strings two and three out of it. So I'm just pointing these things out to help connect the dots in your mind so that you can picture, ah, okay, A chord, uh, major pentatonic scale pattern two, ah, okay, that's part of this chord. It's all connected, it's the same notes. So once you can see it, then you can, you can start to play it. All right, so after the A, then the song goes to the E chord. So after we have, then we go into the E and I played. So let's learn that. So I'm starting on the fourth fret, fourth string, sliding up to the fifth fret, and then sliding up to the sixth fret. So actually I picked those uh, first two and then I slid up to that sixth fret. So we have. Then my middle finger goes down to the fifth fret second string. Index finger goes down to the fourth fret second string. Then my ring finger goes down to, on the sixth, or sorry, seventh fret third string. And once my finger goes down on that seventh fret third string, I'm now mentally, I'm in minor pentatonic scale pattern one, right? So I'm starting to sound more bluesy in this one part, and that's the reason for that. So we have, and then this is a hammer-on between the fifth fret and the sixth fret on the third string. Ring finger goes down on the seventh fret fourth string. Now this is just tracing the notes out of that A chord. So notice that if I had not gone to that major third there, it would have sounded much more bluesy. So if I had gone, right? But adding that one note, it, it kind of gives it more, it pulls it more in that major direction just by going into that major third. Now after that, I threw in that leg. So we're back to the top of the chord, uh, which would be fifth fret, uh, first string. And then a quick, that's a slide and a pull off that happens on the second string. This is easy to do. It's not that hard and it's, it gives you a little bit more speed. So that's a uh, ring finger on the eighth fret second string, slide down to the seventh fret, and then do a pull off to the fifth fret on the second string. So I just picked it once. And then my ring finger goes down, I do a hammer on to the seventh fret third string. Middle finger goes down on the sixth fret uh, third string. And then that last note would be the seventh fret fourth string. So that last lick goes. So just practice going over that lick over and over again until it starts to become comfortable. Uh, and if that's too difficult, just find an alternate. You could go something like that. You know, so you don't have to do the slide if you don't want to, if that's too tricky. All right, so the one thing that I didn't touch on was when we go into the E chord there, what I'm playing there when I play these notes, I'm thinking about your E chord right here. And so I, I get, and this is why it's important to memorize your chords, get your chord shapes all over the neck. When you think E chord, don't just think E chord down here. Think about different places that you can play your E chord all over the neck. So I think about, I was picturing this one, and so I, 
mm. hit those two notes out of the chord. That that's where that came from. That sixth fret, uh, fourth string, and fifth fret, second string. That's where that came from. The songs over the E, and then it goes right back to the A chord. So you can see how just by kind of uh, when you're trying to play the chord changes, I'm just pulling notes out of the chords. If I'm in a, I look for the chord in the nearest neighborhood. And I grab a few notes out of that, and then I go right back into to back to the one chord, and and it makes sense even without anything underneath it. it it's it all makes sense. You don't even need a rhythm player. Um, so I'm going to end this part one uh, lesson here. We've covered a lot of material. Now if I'm going to go through it again one more time. We'll go through it slowly. Remember, if you're a premium member, you have access to the tablature and the on-screen tab viewer, which is interactive. You can slow it down. You can loop sections and all of that stuff, which is really helpful when you're trying to learn something like this. Uh, but hopefully you've got some information out of this and, uh, and, and furthered your playing, or your knowledge of playing anyway, uh, so that you can, uh, you know, hopefully this demystifies a lot of this. Let me back up, play through it one more time, then I'll see you in part two where we'll go over the rest. Mm -hmm.